we wander the landscape of our lives. And I hope one day it will all mean something. Desperate to know our place in this universe. We belong and why we are here. Will the pieces of this puzzle ever line up? Or are we destined to question until the silence drowns out our dreams? Just stop for a moment. Maybe it's right in front of us. Maybe it's that moment. When your smile lights up the world. Thank you everyone for coming uh, today uh, to hear about how powerful images can uh, go worldwide. But I want to start this presentation by introducing myself to those of you that don't know who I am or you, haven't, you, you don't know what I do. Uh, my name is Karen Alsop and I create digital photographic art. Uh, and one of the things that is my passion is to create art that makes a difference. And that was something that you saw in that video. And you are the first to see that video. It was first released today. Um, big thanks to my, um, my brother, Peter John, who created that for me. He's actually up the back. So I I'd love you to just give him a hand. It actually made me tear up. <laughs> and um, it's, uh, it's very powerful. But uh, what is powerful about it is me knowing that that image that I created for Talia actually has made a huge difference in her life. And um, I want you as, you, as you hear my presentation and as you contemplate your own work, I'd really love you to consider what your why is with what you do. I'm sure you all have such different backgrounds and come from uh, doing all different things. How many of you are photographers? OK, great. How many of you are not photographers? You're in a different industry. So almost half, half there. And you all will have uh, something I'm sure that you, you're passionate about. It may or may not link in to what you're actually doing uh, in your work right now. But I'd really love you to just consider at this point what your why is and making that the thing that drives you in your work as well. Does anyone have, and, and maybe it will take the time of the presentation for you to come back to me on this, but does anyone right now have a why that they can share with me and with the rest of us? Is there anyone bold enough to put up your hand and share your why in what you do? I thought everyone might be quiet at this point, but I want you to think about it. Uh, any hands? Oh, we've got one, yes? Amazing community. Did you want to elaborate on that or um, for you? <laughs> well, a bit of a brain work, but no, with, with most of the things I do, I, I get this real inspiration when I see people working together successfully on something new. Yes. And I notice that's what stops and brings me here to my eyes to think of it, but that's what I know that's driving me. Yes. Amazing, yes, yeah. So when you start to put that in more into what you do, then that passion will come through and the success of what you do will grow as well. Uh, it, it goes hand in hand. So I, I'd love you to all consider that. What is your why? Um, know your why. Let that why direct your focus. 
And remember that when your authenticity shines through, your work will be powerful. And that leads us to um, grabbing worldwide attention and changing the world by our work. Now, before I actually go into talking about that, though, I did promise in my presentation that I would share a bit about my processes and how I do what I do. Uh, you saw a bit of a speed edit in that video, and it went obviously very, very quickly, and it's hard to take in what, <laughs> what it is that I did. So I wanted to um, just go through uh, a few little Photoshop tips, and, uh, and then I'll move on to chat a little bit more about grabbing worldwide attention with your work. So I will uh, just move into Photoshop in a moment. So I'll close that down. Give me one second. Oh, <laughs> I forgot that was up on the screen. That's a sneak peek as well. I haven't released that one. Uh, if you're an APA judge, please uh, avert your eyes. <laughs> that will be coming out in a few weeks. Um, OK, so just go here. Let the computer readjust. Oh, sorry, I need to do that again. You get a bit more time with it. OK. Sorry, it's not duplicating at the moment. Give it one more. I'll try again. If it doesn't work, I'll go on with the presentation and then I'll come back to it. Get some technical help. All right, I, I will jump ahead. I'll, I'll just need someone to look at that later if that's okay. It's not actually duplicating my screen, but what I'm gonna do is go back to PowerPoint. I'll come back to the Photoshop work at the end. All right, and we'll go forward with this. Okay. All right, so this image here, how many of you have actually seen it? Okay, just a few. Uh, this image did grab worldwide attention at Christmas time last year. And uh, I'm going to take you through a few examples of some of my images and some of the work that we've done that has grabbed worldwide attention, and that has also made a difference in lives. And talk you through uh, how you can actually apply that to your own work. So how many of you would love your work to go viral? <laughs> I'd say most of you. I mean, it, it's a great thing for people to be able to see your work and to get your work out there. Uh, if you look at these images here, you can see probably uh, many that you actually recognise, uh, that these images have gone viral and, yeah, they're for various different reasons, sometimes subject, manager, ma subject matter, beautiful photography, uh, so all of those elements that have brought that the opportunity to go viral. So I'm going to go through how, there's a bit of a formula, but how you can maximise your potential to get something out there and go viral. Uh, this image here did not plan for it to go anywhere, really. It was just a fun image that I did uh, with my family. And um, my great, great, great grandmother and my great, 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 great grandmother uh, up there on the left. That was a photo that my mum found and I thought I want to do something creative with that, put my kids in it and, uh, and I came up with that. So they got home from school one day, I said quick get, kids get into the studio, we're going to take some photos and dress you up in olden days clothes and create an image with our ancestors. I then posted that on my Facebook just my private Facebook page for my family and friends to see. And I said, oh, look, this is an, uh, just the second one, not the first one. This is an image that uh, my mum found uh, of our ancestors. Look at this. And I didn't say anything about them being my kids. And so I had all these responses from family and friends saying, that's uncanny. That looks exactly like your kids. How amazing is that? Look at the family resemblance. And there was all these people commenting on it. So I let that kind of 
go on for a couple of hours <laughs> uh, just laughing at the comments because they actually thought it was real. They know what I do. They know I Photoshop. They still were fooled. A couple of them weren't. But, uh, so I let that go on. And it was actually noticed by uh, the Daily Mail and some other photography websites like DIY Photography, F-Stoppers, Petapixel. So they all decided to run a uh, story on it. And it went out there because it was interesting subject matter and it was something a little bit different that people hadn't seen before. And for that one, I actually didn't really plan it. But when I saw the interest initially uh, and the first uh, person to contact me was DIY Photography, a writer for DIY Photography. She asked if she could write a story on it because she follows my personal uh, page. And, uh, and I said, yeah, of course. And so then I got the ball rolling on my usual structure of getting the word out there so that uh, other uh, articles could be written. I'll show you the little video that I put together. video together after uh, I got contacted by uh, the DIY photography petapixel on that so that I had something else that would tell the story in a visual way. Uh, one of the things you can do with your images, and it's very, very powerful, is to create video behind the scenes, speed edits, whatever it is that's going to communicate your work to the public in a stronger way. You can put a, a photo up. And you know the chances of it going viral just as a photo on its own is pretty slim. Put a photo up maybe with a really beautiful uh, wording and something very emotional, emotive, that can go viral. And you've probably seen some that have done uh, in recent years. But put a video up and there's much higher chance of it going viral because people are scrolling through and they see it and that grabs their attention very quickly. And the square format, I'll sort of go over that a little bit, but the square format with the text and everything else really does grab people's attention when they're scrolling. How many of you watch your, you know, you look at your Facebook and you don't actually have the sound on and you're just scrolling through. Video stops you, it's got text. Then you might stop and watch it. Now, if you don't want, you know, if you're not in a position to actually put the sound on, you still want it to communicate your message uh, visually. So that's something that you can do is to do something very short, under a minute, uh, that tells the story in a square format um, and that works really, really well. So what is the world looking for? A new idea. So something they haven't seen before. If they've seen it before, it's not that interesting to them. A story behind the image. So if you've got a story behind an image, then you've got a stronger way of communicating that out. Uh, think about some of the projects that you're working on at the moment. Think about some that you've got in your mind that you want to do. What is the story? Is it a strong story? Is it someone else's story that you can tell? Uh, and think about how you can communicate that, not just in the photo, but in the everything else that you put out as well. Meaning and heart. You know, you can have something go viral and it might be that people are really angry with you <laughs> or, you know, there, there could be, uh, you know, the bad reason that it might go viral, but you want to go viral for the right reasons. You want people to see your work for the right reasons. And if something has meaning and something has heart and it makes people feel something, then that is a strong story. That is something that you want the world to see. 
So you want people to feel something when they, when they see your work. And you want it not to just be something that you're trying to make them feel something, but you want it to be something that you feel as well. Because if you're authentic and you feel it, that's going to be so much stronger. First impressions count. So when you put something out, when you have a project that you've been working on that you would really love to get out to the world, you need to plan how you are going to do that, in what order you're going to do that, and make sure that it's going to hit people straight away. So there are a few methods to that, and there you can juggle it around at, at different times, but I'm going to go through those methods with you to help you get the best out of your um, projects and what you release. So as I said, this was just created as a teaching tool for my education site. So I have a, an education start, a site called Story Out Education. Are there any members of that in here? There's a few of you. Uh, and I put out videos every week and I train people on how to use Photoshop, how to composite, all of that. So this project really was a fun thing I could do with my family and a teaching tool. And I didn't mean for it to go viral, but it did. Uh, so in Daily Mail, you know, once they sort of write something, it, it gets out there. So um, I approached it in the same way that I approach other projects that we've released that, I, that we planned to have go quite big. And I'm going to go through those. Uh, I've already said that, so I'll skip forward. Um, OK, this project, the Christmas Wish project, was something that we did as a team. And it's part of what we call the HEART project. So the HEART project is something that uh, we work in partnership with Adobe on. And it is a, it, it's always a different project. So about four times a year, we do something that makes a difference in people's lives through photography. Uh, and so the Christmas Wish, Wish project was all about making kids that are in hospital at Christmas time forget about that, to take them out of the hospital and um, just give them some joy at Christmas time because it's the, it's the worst time to be stuck in hospital. And so we, we did a project where we surprised them. I'm going to show you the video. I won't, I won't share too much. But this particular project did go viral. Uh, it went into nearly all of the, you know, all the big uh, publications like Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, Daily Mail, uh, Vanity Fair, just a, a whole range. So once a few of them started writing about it, then they all start writing about it. And because it was something that moved people. Uh, so the project, the viral trigger, I'm going to talk about a viral trigger. It's something that you need. A viral trigger was, in this case, a Daily Mail exclusive. Uh, and the video that I posted on my Facebook page. Uh, the Daily Mail wrote an exclusive, so they were the first to write an article on it. So we actually communicated with them early on. And that then led on to all the other publications writing about it. But then also the video that, I, that we posted on Facebook immediately got comments and shares because it moved people. And when you start, you know, I, I guess many of you try and post on Facebook and one person sees it, right? The way that Facebook works now, it's very hard to get anything seen. But if some people start commenting and sharing, then it builds, then the momentum builds. So if you can create something, and this is without boosts, this is without paying, if you can create something that immediately grabs someone and makes them share it and makes them comment, then that's going to go a whole lot further. Um, so this was also seasonal. So when we planned when we were going to release it, we planned the day we were going to release it, which was December the 12th. We actually did the project at the end of November to make sure we had enough time to put everything together to be able to share it. Uh, and then we released it on the 12th of December to make sure that we had a couple of weeks before Christmas that people could share it and um, talk about it. It was heartwarming. And obviously, at Christmas time, you want heartwarming stories. And people love sharing those stories that warm their hearts, particularly at Christmas time. Uh, so having a, an understanding of timing is really important in your releases as well, and thinking about what else is going on in the world. Are there any other big events that you know should be focused on? Maybe you should wait to release something. You know, Being really aware of what's going on will help. 
Uh, it was newsworthy because of the way that we did it, but because it was heartwarming, but also because it was quite out there. So I'll show you the video and you'll understand why. It was, it was hard work, and it was a lot of work, and it was a big team effort, and it wasn't something that was easy. Uh, if something's easy, people aren't going to share it because there's, there's of no interest to them, really. But it, it was hard work, and people could see in the video everyone that got involved and how um, it all came about. Uh, so the video was shared. And one thing also to remember, you're working, when you're putting things out and if it starts to gather momentum and you start to get news contacts contacting you, you we're in Australia, okay, and the other side of the world are on a totally different time zone to us. And if you miss a day, you miss a whole day. So we were responding to the like CNN and all of the overseas news crews and different people. We were trying to respond to them as soon as we could and have someone respond you know, in the middle of the night if need be. Um, our PR guy was getting up and setting his alarm for 4 a.m. so that he could res respond and get back to them. Time sensitive because it only had that window of time. And you know, yeah, you miss it they're going to go on to something else. So you do need to be aware of that and ready, set time aside. If you've got something that you know is very shareable, set time aside afterwards to make sure that you can follow up on it. Are you ready to watch it? OK, brace yourself. There may be tears. I was diagnosed in April at the start of this year. And with um, leukaemia, or wiggle my toes or I can move my fingers, um, arms, not really.
people part of what you do that you thank them and that you give them credit because it's always going to be a team effort, something like this. So that was uh, one amazing day uh, with, with a team of volunteers that uh, just made such a difference in those kids' lives and those families' lives. I'm still getting messages from those families sharing how much it meant to them. Uh, Brittany, the one that you saw uh, in the wheelchair, she is now, we've kept in contact with her and she is now part of our Heart Project team. She shared with us at the Christmas Wish where we met her that she loves photography and that she's been in, into photography for years. She's 17. Uh, and so she is now uh, under a scholarship of sorts with the Heart Project and she's now creating images uh, for other people. Uh, and it's just amazing, you know, to be able to kind of have other people involved and, and other people doing things. If if you, uh, afterwards, if you actually want to come up and chat to me about involved, being involved in the Heart Project, I'd love to chat to you. We are expanding it. We are doing another one at Christmas time that we uh, want to do in various hospitals around Australia. So uh, do come and chat to me if that's something that you find is a passion for you. I'd love to talk. Um, but yeah, that I, I just I'm wondering because I know people watch the videos and I, I do put out videos for just about everything that I create, and often people watch them and probably th think that it's something that is beyond what where you're at in your photography in your business business because well does it involve hiring a videographer does it involve paying someone to edit you know what what actually does it take to put something together. That video there was filmed by uh, people that are not videographers, they're, you know, photographers or people that aren't even photographers. I hand them a camera that self-focuses and I just say, look, just make sure that you're grabbing different little snippets here and there uh, and then we, we put it together. Um, and so you don't have to have the, the, you know, you don't have to have someone that you pay a lot of money to, to create the behind the scenes. Obviously, whenever you do uh, pay someone to do it or you get a professional, the quality is going to be much better. But in the end, this, is, this, was, this went viral and it was not done by professionals, but it was all about the heart in it. It was all about the heart. So um, if it's something that you know you're a bit worried about or scared about in introducing video into it, don't be, just start somewhere. Put it together. You know, there's so many. There's software out there that does it, and obviously the Adobe Suite, Premiere, and After Effects, and everything does it. But you know, you could even film it on your phone, and there's editing software you can get on your phone. And sometimes the footage that I use is off my iPhone, so you can do it with anything. Um, so, documenting the process. The why? Why is it so important to document the process? Now, this isn't just about going viral. Documenting the process of what you do will help you in your businesses, in your work, in creating value in what you do. I had a phone call the other week from someone that uh, called me up. She'd not, she'd not actually seen my work yet. But she phoned me and she said, um, I, I've heard that you do this amazing Photoshop work. I want you to create something. Uh, and I've been told that you're the best and that you're really expensive, but I, I, it doesn't matter. I want you to do it. I don't advertise any prices. I, I hadn't met this person before. And in fact, the person that recommended me, I haven't met. They are someone that came across my work and saw the process, saw the behind the scenes, saw the videos. And that value came out of that. The value is shown because you see the work that's involved. Uh, so who, how many of you, just put your hands up, are compositors, you do Photoshop work? Yeah. How hard is it for people to understand the work that goes into it? It's, you know, you show them a finished product and they don't get it. They don't get the hours that go into it. But if you document your behind the scenes, they will start to understand. How can you document it? Speed edits are really 
you know, I do it for every project now. You just need software. And if you want to write this down, I use Screencast-O-Matic on the Mac. It's a really great program, and it doesn't slow my computer down. And I just leave it running, and I pause it or stop it and join it together in an editing program later. But you can do all the editing within it as well. So on, on the PC, I use, so did I say Screencast-O-Matic or Screen? Screencast-O-Matic is PC and Mac. So Screencast-O-Matic is PC and Mac, and Screen Flick is Mac only. So either of those software, so Screencast-O-Matic or Screen Flick, will enable you to record, to pause, to speed up, put it all together, uh, and to be able to share with people the work that goes into your editing. Uh, so that's, that's a really important point. Uh, the story is just so important. So these behind the scenes videos, I generally always have someone filming the behind the scenes. If I don't have someone there, I stick the camera on a tripod. I move it a couple of times. I grab the snippets without anyone else there so that I can put something together that tells the story of the shoot, the part, that part of it. Because not only is the compositing, you know, you need to show how that is, the work goes into that, you need to show the work that goes into the shoot as well. It's different to a normal photo shoot. People don't understand it. There's not enough people doing it. Uh, so the general public just don't understand what goes into it. And it doesn't matter whether you're uh, talking about commercial, having commercial clients or domestic clients. So families or people that are commercial companies, it works for all of that. So I have both. And when they, um, they see that work, that behind the scenes, it blows them away. And then when they see that of their own, you know, their own finished product, and then they share it, they're amazed. People think I charge the families and their clients for the videos. They say, how much do you charge them for that part? Because it's like a memento of their project. But of course, I'm not going to charge for that, because that is my marketing, and that is what shares, my, shares what I do. So, and then they share it. So it's really, really, really important. It takes time, but like anything, you do it a lot, you speed up your workflow. So the purpose of what you're doing becomes clear with the video. Photo only, purpose isn't always there, and people aren't always going to read the text. Emotion is communicated. Emotion is hard to communicate just with a photo. You can do it, but it's hard. With video and music and words, I don't know how many of you were sort of starting to tear up with the first video even that I showed you, but that whole combination of the story being told through all of those different senses brings emotion out, and that's important because it, it, makes, people, um, it makes people want to share it, and it makes people dr drawn to your work as well. So the shareable content is then made. So process of documenting, behind the scenes photographs. So you're going to have a friend or someone taking photos of what's going on. So those you would use where? Your blog, social media, Instagram. Take them on the phone if you have to, but get some behind the scenes photos so that you've got something to share. If you want it to go out into the magazines, into the um, news sites and all of that, you need to have a little bit more uh, that you can give them than just the finished product because they're not going to run a story just with that finished product. So we always have behind the scenes photos and videos, and the photos are so important for the news sites and the print and everything else. Take Five, uh, right, I'm going to show you the project, but I just got an email from Take Five yesterday, the magazine. They're doing an article on SJ and Hamish, the one I'm going to show you soon. And that, uh, they emailed me and they said, oh, can we, uh, we're writing a story, can we get the photos? I immediately have a page and links that I can send to them with all the information ready to go. It's called a media center. I'm going to show you that. It didn't take me more than a couple of seconds to write back and share that. So it's important to have everything ready. Okay? And this, is, this project was from, we released it back in May. And we're still getting magazines and things writing about it. So I always have to have that ready. Um, so behind the scenes photographs. Behind the scenes video, as I've showed you, that's so important for the shareable content. And creation of a blog post. How many of you like writing blog posts? <laughs> no one? A couple of people. Right, it's not common that people, people get stuck on blog posts. I write a blog post. I'm not, I don't write a blog post about my everyday stuff. 
because it's going to be pretty boring. I'd rather just do a social picture or an Instagram or something shareable that's just the one picture. But when it's a project like the Christmas Wish, then I write a blog because not only does that work well with SEO and getting, you know, the, getting all of your um, Google rankings up, but it gives you content to share with the news sites. It gives you content to share with the blog, other blogs. So, and it links back and forth. So it's really important not to just have it on social media, but to get it onto a blog so that it, it is linkable and, and all of that happens. Um, if you don't have a blog, it, even if you just set it up for certain projects and you don't blog all the time, it's still better than nothing. But the more you blog, the more it's going to help you with your SEO. So full length video and social video. So you saw a full length video just then of the Christmas wish. You saw a social video of the little one that I did with the ancestors. So they're two different types of things. The social video works well on Facebook and Instagram, you know, on the social sites. Uh, but the longer form videos don't work as well on Facebook uh, because people don't have that attention span that they do when they're looking for something. So in a blog post, the long form video is better because people are stopping, they're reading about it, they're taking their times, like reading a magazine, have the full length video. On YouTube, the full length video is going to be better because people are stopping and they're ready to, to watch a video. So sharing tips. Uh, to tell, tell your story through the blog post and or media release, so you might have a media release that you send out. Uh, and then the news sites will be able to use this and link back. So sending traffic back to your site is really important too. You want to send them back to your site. Uh, include behind the scenes photos, as I've said. Create a video that tells a story no more than five minutes. Uh, and that even is a bit long, but just depends on your project. And include subtitles. So remember, if they're watching it and they don't have uh, any visual, uh, they don't have any audio, you need to have subtitles. Do you know how to get the subtitles really easily? All right, so you load it onto YouTube and it automatically works out the subtitles, except it's pretty bad at it. <laughs> and it, you'll, you'll see some mistakes. You just go in and edit that. So you edit the captions. So once it's on YouTube, it will automate. It takes, you know, it takes a little while depending on how long their video is. Then you go in and edit it. You can save that caption file and load it into Facebook or wherever it is that you post it as a caption file. So you, when I do it, I put it on YouTube, I organize my captions, I edit them, and then I, if I load it onto Facebook, I load the captions in there as well. Now, what happens in Facebook is when it plays, it, uh, it, you're scrolling through. If you haven't got sound on, the captions automatically come up. If you've got sound on, the captions don't come up. So it's there for people that are watching it silently. So that's really important too. It will stop them and, you know, you can watch, you might be watching something now, I don't know. <laughs> um, create a short version uh, that is one minute or less and you don't need a professional videographer, but it is nice to have one. Okay, so this one here, this project here, did anyone see this one? This is Tanya Hennessy, she's a comedian, so who follows her? Yeah, I thought more people would. There you go. Tanya Hennessy, she's a comedian from Canberra, and she has a lot of videos she puts out that, um, that go viral, and she's just very funny. So they're all about everyday life. And so she posted something on her Facebook page and said, uh, I want to be a princess. I want to be a Disney princess, she said. And so uh, we contacted her and said, well, we can make that happen. Why not? So I hadn't met her before, but you know, we just made contact, made contact, and organised to make it work. She came from Canberra to Sydney. I was coming back to Sydney for something. I'm from Melbourne, by the way, and um, and we had one day in a studio to make something happen. Uh, so this is what the outcome was. Uh, so it was a little bit of a funny image, uh, like a play on Cinderella, I guess, with her running away with all the food and, and the rats following her with the food and so forth. Um, now she posted it. So she, we made a video, behind the scenes video again. It wasn't the photo that went viral or that helped me gain two, two and a half thousand followers from this. It was the video. Okay, so um, the trigger was organic shares from her Facebook page because she had over 600,000 followers at the time that she posted it. 
So finding someone doing something for someone uh, that's mutually beneficial and, and they have a lot of followers actually does work well. You know, it can work well if you do it the, the right way. So I created a cinemagraph of this as well just for a bit of something different. So we've got some moving parts to it. We actually filmed uh, her dress moving, had the leaf blowers going in the studio <laughs> to get all that poof come up. and. Um, and yeah, just the other bits and pieces, I've, I've got a tutorial on my site that goes through it in detail, I can't show you now, but um, the other moving bits, the tail and the mouse on the top, is created in After Effects using Puppet Warp. And there's a really cool way of doing it, and it's just with a still image, so lots of fun. You can create something a bit different. Okay, so... I've already explained that. I'm going to show you the social video that she posted. And uh, this is what actually gained all the likes and the views. And it reached uh, 349,262 people. Uh, and I, at the time, had about 7,000 followers uh, on my Facebook page. And I gained about 2,500 just from this alone. We made her a princess. Yeah, an uh, adult princess. An adult princess. Because I've always wanted to do it. I love the idea of being a princess. I don't think I'm a traditional princess. Karen is a profesh. Like, she knows what to do. She's really creative. Her mind is extraordinary. And I think what you do is amazing. People who can't walk, you make this fantasy of them being able to walk. It's incredibly powerful. And I think you're exceptional. Oh no, you're ridiculously talented. <laughs> Go check out all of her stuff immediately. Okay, so that was the video that went out. Um, really. Uh, I'm thankful for what Tanya said. I didn't tell her to say all that, but it's really, really lovely of her. And that just was a little interview that we did at the end of uh, the shoot. Just got, sat down and asked her to share of her experience. So it's a, it's a testimonial of sorts. So even filming testimonials from people, very powerful, you know, and it can um, help communicate something that you don't necessarily want to share yourself, but if someone else shares it, it's very, very powerful. So uh, that was the social video that really um, just, it, it was just great for my following. Uh, it was a fun project, uh, it took some time, but, but well worth it. So consider that that might be a way, you know, you might know someone that has a lot of followers, that has, is doing something interesting, that you could do something for, you know. Um, so that's, does anyone have any questions at this point about that? I'm I'm a bit more than happy to answer questions throughout too. So if you do think, yes? Um, so I actually had a PR person uh, at the time, Adam, and he uh, contacted her and shared on my behalf, so which was helpful. So he, he emailed her uh, and he said, look, I know someone that can make you a princess, you know, and we went from there. So that helped. So having someone to speak on your behalf doesn't have to be a PR agent, but someone that is in the industry can be very helpful. I probably would have contacted her myself as well. Who knows whether she would have responded? Possibly not. Because, you know, if you, yeah, it's much more powerful if someone's speaking for you. So, any other questions? Okay. All right, so the full length video was something that I shared on my Facebook page. I prefer the full length video because it tells more of the story. You know, these social videos are great, but they can not always communicate everything that you want them to. So a full length video is important, as I said, and uh, you need to bother with it just mainly for your blog and for YouTube, uh, and people come back to it. So uh, the thing with the, it carries more emotion, but the thing with the longer form videos is they are longer lasting. People are going to come back to them later on. Whereas the short form videos kind of have a really short shelf life, then no one really comes back to it because they go back down into the news feed never to be seen again. So the long form videos that you put on YouTube and your blog and things will generate views over time. 
Okay, so I'm going to just show you this one very quickly. Actually, I might, I'm going to skip that one because I will skip that one. You can see it on my YouTube. It's just the longer form because I really want to go on to the next bit. Okay, moving people. Pro providing something that will encourage people to feel something and to want to do something as well. So projects with heart. How can you activate someone to share your content? You want them to share something that is powerful and is moving and will make a difference. You want them to share something that is going to actually make a difference in the world as well. So this next project, it's not just about sharing SJ and Hamish's story, but there's purpose behind it. And it um, and even in the, it, she's got to go fund me and we're trying to direct people to raise money for her cause as well. But doing something that's going to make a difference. So I'm going to show you this one. Ah, I have to press play again. Hang on. Okay. Are you okay, Mummy? I am. Are you okay? Yes. Yes, she does. to create something amazing for SJ that she can treasure and that can give her inspiration for the future. SJ has a son, Hamish. He's eight now, but at the time that she became a quadriplegic, he was four. It's all a bit of a blur to me, actually. It, it, the whole story, the whole scenario, my perspective of it now, my version of the story would probably be very different from my husband's and very different from my family members and probably really different from Hamish. Prior to that, her life was totally full of adventure. You know, she'd ride around Australia, she'd travel the world and, and, and her life was all about grabbing the moments and adrenaline rush. I was getting a lot of nerve pain. I had a bulging disc at my C5, C6 part of my spine. So the disc was bulging, which was putting pressure on a nerve, which was running down my left arm. Long and short of it was the outcome was going to be surgery, and it was basically a simple surgery. I just went into it pretty, pretty you know, not concerned because it was low risk, and I woke up from the anaesthetic and I couldn't move. She wants to see her son have that life that she had and uh, so that was the inspiration behind our imagery to give that so the images uh, and the actual adventure that we had when we did it sort of gave that across to Hamish. Von Wong I've been following him for uh, many years and his projects are always incredible. It came up because Ben was going to be in Australia and we wanted to do another heart project and so that idea of showing how both of us could make a difference through our art and through our photography but in really different ways. second during my surgery didn't happen I'd be out there jumping around at Mount York with my boy all said and done um, you know you've got to look at life I suppose as the stereotypical journey and what's happened to me has happened to me and um, 
even though I do have that this wheelchair that's my mode of transport now this cool stuff can still happen and the beautiful stuff in my relationship with Hamish can still happen and amazing experiences are still coming my way. There's so many different ways of making a difference and you know just to find that and to go out there and do it. It might be personal projects here and there. It might be just finding someone that can help. That's the best gift is to give to someone else. That was an amazing, epic <laughs> project to be part of. Uh, to, to have the opportunity to make a difference in her world, in her son's world, you know, to break her out of the everyday struggle that she's in, uh, just trying to cope with daily life after a routine operation goes wrong, you know, your whole world's turned around. To be able to do something uh, using our gifts, uh, our talents, uh, it's just an amazing thing to be able to do. And if you have that opportunity to do something for someone else, I just encourage you, it is so worth putting aside the time to do it. Uh, that project, as you saw, took uh, it was done over about four days. Uh, Von Wong came over from America and I came in from Melbourne and we gathered a, a bunch of people to help, a huge team to help uh, and to make it happen. And so many, all those volunteers and the people rigging up and I mean, Ben's part of the whole thing was the challenging bit. I am so thankful I do Photoshop and I can go into the studio and create uh, these Im images, you know, using the power of Photoshop. He did obviously use a bit of po pro post-processing in Photoshop, but that hard work of being out waiting for hours while it was rigged up in the rain to go out and get that one shot, wow. <laughs> um, so, how many of you follow Ben Von Wong? Oh, if you don't, you've got to follow follow Von Wong. His 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 images and his his work. Uh, you know, we're very different in our approach. This is why we work together on this project, and why it made so much sense is we're quite different in our approach. In that he does most of his stuff in camera, and I do mine uh, more half half, but post processing. Uh, but the the wonderful thing is that we both want to make a difference with our work. And so if you follow his work uh, and see all the amazing projects that he's doing to change the world and to bring awareness of different things uh, and social, social things and, and the way that he's doing it is just really incredible. So I encourage you to take a look. And his work, like people actually think his work is heavily photoshopped and they don't realise how much work he does in camera to get it happening. You can see it in the video. So that's again just an example of why it's so important to get the behind the scenes video and to show what goes into it because if with Ben's work, without that behind the scenes, and he always puts out behind the scenes of all his work as well, without that people would be immediately assuming that most of it's done in Photoshop. He's sitting in his office and he's putting things together. And they wouldn't understand that incredible effort that he goes to to create an image. Um, so that video we planned very carefully with our launch. We wanted this to go viral because SJ wanted to make a difference in her community and raise money and awareness to help uh, make the Blue Mountains more accessible for this disabled community. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been up there and kind of taken note of how hard it is to get in and out and around, you know, and think about whether if you're in a wheelchair, how hard it would be. When I was up there delivering the prints back to her, I had all my suitcases and I couldn't even find a train station that had a lift and I had to get um, the videographer, Courtney, to help me down this huge amount of stairs just to get down to the train station. So I can imagine how hard it is for someone like SJ. So her passion is to see that changed in the Blue Mountains and to raise money for that. So she, we set up a um, GoFundMe for that. So we want 
wanted this to go viral so that she could share her story, and it did. We planned it for the week before Mother's Day because this story is all about a mother and a son and their journey and their adventure and her strength and also her challenges, but how important it is for her to make her son's life a life full of adventure, the adventure that she misses but that her son absolutely loves. So that was very strategic in terms of our timing. Now, we actually did this project last December and we didn't launch it until May. So we planned well ahead of time and we had a lot of meetings to work out even the order of things. So this video that you saw was my version of it and Von Wong also has a video that's kind of his version of it and then we have a social video that went out as well. So we have quite a few different parts of the story and then both of our blog posts and all of that that went out. So we kind of worked with both of our social followings, and his is so much bigger than mine, but both of our social followings to launch this and to get the word out. Uh, so planning it, the important steps, order of release, and preparing your followers. You can actually, if you've got something big you want to share with your followers, Give them some sneak peeks, some hints. If you're following my Facebook page or even following uh, the Adobe page, you may have seen a sneak peek of the Get Well tree that we're working on with the Heart Project. Uh, the image that I showed right at the start was just in a little square. Um, sneak peeks that don't show everything, that just give people a hint of what's to come to get them excited about what they're going to see so that they are excited to share it. Uh, when and where to share the video, you need to think about that. And the blog post, focus on the title as well. A title is important. Grabbing people with the title and making it something that's shareable. You don't want it to be clickbaity. You don't want it to be, you know, there's just too much of that going around. But you do want the title to be really clear what it is you're trying to communicate and be interesting so that people want to read it. Um, so think about the title. Uh, and email your media connections. So once, you know, if you've started doing this, as I said, what happened with the, um, the first one that I showed you was that once the ball started rolling on it, I had media connections that I could email and say, hey, do you want to write an article on this? And so if you can establish some initial media con connections and then build it up, then uh, keep sending them something. Now, they want, they want content. They, they need content to share. They want great content to share. So if you've got content that they can share, send it to them. They will share it. And you don't have to start with the big sites. Uh, I started with local newspapers, local magazines. Uh, I just uh, completed a, a, pers like a job for a domestic client, a family, uh, and that was a family of dad, mum, daughter, uh, he's into helicopters and she's into horse riding and so he's lowering her down from a helicopter, lowering the daughter down and she's about to jump on a horse and the mum's horse riding, I don't know, you can kind of picture it. It's a bit different, not your normal family photo. Um, but they actually came to me uh, initially from seeing my work in a magazine that was in a cafe that they visited. And they saw it and they read about it and then they contacted me and said, we want to have that, we want that for our family. So try and get your work wherever you can get it. With this kind of work, with compositing work that people don't understand, they're not going to be necessarily knocking down your door because it's not like portrait photography, wedding photography, the sort of thing that everyone knows they need. People don't know they need it, so you need to show it to them. So wherever it is that you can share it, share it. So start editorials. Local newspapers love to write editorials. They love it even more if you give them everything. You might even write the basis of the story so they don't have to do much work. And then all the information is going to be correct as well. And then provide the images. They will actually run the story. Um, so have a think about that and then just build up to bigger and bigger things. Set up a media centre, as I said before. I'm going to show you a snippet of that uh, in a moment. But the media centre is that hub 
where you send all of the media people to to grab to say this is where the photos are, this is where the high res are, the low res are, the credits, uh, the animations, anything that it is that you want them to share, and you make sure that you're really specific about who to credit and all of that. Make it easy for them. Just make it really easy for them and they will run the story. You make it hard for them and you take time to get back to them and you send it by email and it doesn't work, they're not going to run the story. Cross-posting. Who has cross-posted on Facebook before? Is that a hand back there? Yes? Awesome. It is a really powerful way of sharing your content. Cross-posting is when you are uh, basically, if I've posted that Christmas Wish video, I have another site that's big that might want to share it as well. So let's say Adobe wants to share the Christmas Wish as well. They could do one of three things. They could share it just as a link on their Facebook page from my page which is the normal way that you'd probably do it. They could upload it if I gave them access, but that would mean that their uh, views would be separate to my views. It would be, it would be separated. Or they can cross-post it. And cross-posting is like the best of both worlds because it's linked back to that first central one on my site. The views accumulate, so it looks like they've uploaded it and posted it. And the views accumulate for all of them. So Von Wong does this a lot with his uh, launches as well. Uh, and so he has some contacts with some really massive Facebook pages that have millions of followers. And he gets them to cross post it. And then those views go straight up. So it's really a great way of doing it. But you do generally need to explain to the other other Facebook page how to do it, give them a link, sort of set it up. Once they've set it up with you though, you'll see it, it's in the back end of your Facebook site, it's um, under your settings, but under video settings. But what, you test it with someone you know, just to get it going, but basically once it's, once it's there, once they've accepted you, whenever you have a video that's relevant to them, you can turn on cross-posting for that, for that Facebook page and it will pop up on their page and say, oh, there's another video that you can cross-post. Right, so it's a really awesome way of sharing and the views will accumulate. Um, so follow up quickly, as I said before, don't let it slide, make sure you follow up. So order of release. So we, for this one, just so you know, and we do it differently depending on what we're doing, but just with the, this one, because there was two of us involved, uh, three really, so we had the Heart Project, Von Wong and myself. Story art. So soft launch the blog post first. We didn't actually tell people that we'd posted the blog post. That's what a soft launch is. We put it up, starts to become searchable, had all the information there, could link that to media places that might post about it, but we didn't actually post it on our social networks yet. So we soft, post, we soft posted it. Uh, we scheduled the social video for a particular time that worked well for both of us. Von Wong's in America, I'm in Australia. Timing, a bit tricky, was very hard to work out at the best time. Uh, but we scheduled it so it was ready to go for the best time. Uh, we soft launched the YouTube videos. The reason we did that is because they're embedded into the um, blog posts. So you need to make sure they're there and they're viewable. But again, we didn't share them publicly but let the views start to accumulate there. So you can do it that way. And that way, once people start hitting your website, there's the views start building up. We shared at prime time. If you're sharing uh, something, you might know when is the best time to share. I generally find for me around 7.30 on a weeknight is a great time to share. Um, with the, but it just depends on who's looking. But I don't know, does anyone else have a time that kind of works well for them? It's any different to that? Yeah? Yes, 8 o'clock, yeah. Kids are in bed, people are scrolling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you can't actually physically post then, schedule it to post then and that will definitely help. You, I find if I post in the middle of the day, I don't get many people seeing it. So it really does make a difference. 
uh, and Ghana Organic shares. They're going to be the most powerful. Yes, you can pay to boost, but if you can get people sharing and commenting straight away, that's when other people are going to see it because it's going to come up in their news feed. So if you have a, a small following that you can let know that you're going to launch something, you'd love them to share, you'd love them to comment, that will help. Uh, so once that, that starts happening, then more and more and more people will actually see it. But it has to happen straight away. If it kind of doesn't happen within the first couple of hours, it's not really going to happen in terms of the organic. So then you might consider boosting at that point just to get some people commenting if they've missed it. Uh, and feed it to complementary pages that will share it as well. So uh, that not, might not be photography related. Might not be, uh, it might be like for SJ's project, uh, adventure sites were really interested in it. Uh, An adventure magazine recently wrote a whole big article on it with all the pictures, full page, pit, full page pictures, beautiful story that recently came out. And it's, it's not one I've heard of, because that's not you know, something that I'm involved in with the adventure scene, but it was certainly something that was making um, waves in their uh, industry. So try and think about who does your concept or your project relate to, and who can you share it with. OK. So blog post. So create a title that's catchy, relevant, descriptive, and short and share the post link with all other posts, including video posts and Instagram. So what I mean is when you post the video, which you hope will start getting a lot of traction, make sure you include the link to the blog so they can go back and, and view more information about it uh, and get back to your site. That's important. Uh, and share it with potential media outlets as a basis for the story. So write it in a way that gives them enough information that they can grab that information and rewrite the story and include behind the scenes in the blog post. So the photos of what's happening, kind of tell the story. You don't have to have a lot of words, really. I mean, you can ha if you can have at least sort of 300 or so, 500, but if you can interdisperse the pictures to tell the story of what happened, the behind the scenes pictures, that will really help. Uh, and then ensure that your site's easily searchable, okay? so. Do you guys ever Google your site and your name? Yeah, it's really important to kind of keep an eye on that and make sure that people can find your site. Uh, when I started Story Art, uh, which was actually only uh, about three years ago now, and when I first started my website, I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to be found because, you know, when you first start a site, it takes a long time. It took about six months because I just wanted, the main thing I was concerned about was I wanted people to be able to write story art and for it to come up on the top because if they saw my name somewhere, they could find it. That, that was the main thing or my name. So Karen Allsop and it come up at the top. It did take a little while, but now a lot to do with a lot of the media and all of the different sites that have written about things that I've done, it definitely comes up at the top. There's no question, but I need to keep up with that. Um, so, but there's other things, obviously, that you want your sites to come up the top for, so certain keywords. Uh, so that's why the, the blog posts are really important to help with that. So when you're writing the blog post, try and include words that you would want people to search for you for as well when you, t when you write it. Um, and other blog sharing will help your SEO, but be careful they don't copy it word for word because that will not help your SEO, okay? So when someone shares and they rewrite your story, make sure it's not word for word, that they have written it differently, okay? Otherwise, Google will penalise. Uh, okay, media connections. So start, as I said, start with the achievable. Local, if you need to, and just work out from there. As you create more, your list will grow. It will continue to grow. Uh, and ensure you save your contacts. So don't lose them, don't misplace them. Keep them in a list so you can get back into contact with them next time. Uh, and use a PR agent if you prefer not to handle this yourself. Is there anyone here that has a PR agent? Okay, so I 
did for a while, he can't do it at the moment, but has actually really helped me. Someone that I trust, someone that I knew uh, from other projects that I'd worked for. So it's not that I went out and searched for a particular PR agent. If you have someone you think is really good with communication and with people that could handle that for you. As I said before, someone speaking on your behalf can be more powerful than you approaching someone yourself. This doesn't have to be an official PR person as such, but it can be someone that you give that job to. So have a think about if there's someone in your world that would actually be able to do that for you. Maybe they work on a commission basis or something if it's um, to get work. So when emailing, also just a couple of technical tips, don't, if you don't know this, don't send to a really big list all at once because it's probably going to end up in their spam. Uh, either separate them out or use a mailing list software like MailChimp uh, or ActiveCampaign. So this here is the media centre, it's just the top of it. So this, this media centre at the moment is on our latest project on theheartproject.com.au. If you go to the site theheartproject.com.au, click on media centre, uh, you'll be able to see you can actually access. We have left it open without a password. We've tried the password thing as well, but with uh, projects like this that go viral really quickly, it's sometimes it's just easier to go, here's the page, that's where your information is. Uh, and we specify on the media centre what they can do, what they can't do. Something like, don't edit the photos. Uh, I did, before I put that on there, there was a site that did edit the photos and they oversaturated them and they looked terrible. As soon as I saw that, I was straight onto that. So yeah, just be careful that you specify what they can and can't do. Don't watermark your images. Now, you can do it. I'm not saying don't, don't, don't. But for something like this where you're wanting it to go into news sites, in print, whatever it is, they are not likely to run it. You know, even on C we've had a lot of our uh, heart projects go onto CNN and onto video, onto the Today Show. They're not likely to run it if it has a watermark. Now, are you protected? Is it safe? Are people going to steal your images? Well, you take that risk, but I think you take that risk if you have a watermark on it anyway, because how many of you know how to get rid of a watermark with Photoshop? It's pretty easy. Uh, so that, you know, having a watermark is good if you're thinking that someone's going to post your image elsewhere and not be able to connect it back to you, because it gives them a way of finding you. But in this context, if you're very specific, there will be credit in the news article. So every article that's been written, and there's hundreds out there and they're in all different languages as well, uh, on our projects, the credits are there. So um, it says Karen Allsopper, it says Benjamin Von Wong, it says our website on all of the pages. My alert off, I've got 15 minutes just went off, so <laughs> I'm keeping an eye, my, phone, uh, my watch just buzzed. So make sure, that, you know, if you're really wanting it to get out there, you'll find if you have watermarks, they'll probably ask you to take them off. How many of you feel uncomfortable with that? How many of you are comfortable with that just for the sake of it going viral? Okay, yep. Just make sure, as I said, make sure you're very specific on credits. Uh, so, you know, the Take 5, as I said, wrote to me yesterday. They said, of course, you know, provide the images, but of course we'll credit you. Please tell us what the credits need to be. So, you, you know, I outline that and that will be in the article right next to the pictures. It's not a problem. I usually, too, I put Karen Allsop and my website. So, I put Karen Allsop, storyart.com.au instead of just my name. My name's very searchable on, on the web, but if they can see a website there, and if the site is happy to post that, then that's even better. So if you can get your website on there as a credit, then that's <laughs> awesome. Include specifics on the credits, uh, and you're behind the scenes photographers as well. Uh, if you've got more than one, it can sometimes be hard, but we try and make sure that our behind the scenes photographers are credited to their photos as well. And that helps their SEO. They've volunteered time, in the, in the case of the Heart Project, volunteered time and effort to do it. They need to be credited as well. OK, include high-res folder and a low-res folder. So you've got your web res and you've got your high-res for print. Separate them out so that the right places can get the right images. 
don't watermark and include a folder of the behind the scenes photos. So separate the folders. You can use Dropbox. You can use different uh, ways of kind of making sure that you've got everything really well organized. Uh, so we've got Dropbox linked to this and we've got it shareable so that they can click on the particular folders they need and just download what they want. Yeah? Any questions about the media center? Okay, yes? No, no, no. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a page on our website that we direct people, we direct the news sites to, to get the photos and the information they want. Yeah, that's all it is. So, page on your website. Yeah. So, one per story. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, for us, with the Heart Project site, we generally put the latest story up in the media centre. Um, so, because it's once per quarter. So, you know, once it gets up to that, we put the other, archive it, but still have it accessible. Yeah, so we'll move on to the next one pretty soon. But I'm glad we've still got that one on because, as I said, I'm still getting contacted, so it makes it really easy. Okay. Uh, and you can put other things in there. News sites like things, uh, like places like Daily Mail and all of that, and they do their stories, they like things like animated GIFs and interesting, uh, like sliders. You know how you can do the sliders? So the before and after sliders. So you, I've, we've provided for Christmas wish, we provided the before and after images, just PNGs exactly the same, so that you've got, you can put a slider together. And that just gives it more, uh, more content and more shareable content. And you can also be a bit exclu exclusive with certain sites. So you might give a site more at the start and that's only for them so they might get more information more photos that only they can use and then they get the exclusive and then the other sites don't get all of that so you can kind of get a i guess get get a new site that you want on your site uh, and they will then want to be running all of your stories because you're giving that special treatment to them so that can work well too uh, and, you know, I, I've mentioned that Daily Mail have run stories and they're often the first to run our stories. We have a wonderful contact at the Daily Mail that writes our stories really well and that we can trust now. Whether or not the Daily Mail is the necessarily the best paper <laughs> or site to go in, it's, um, it comes down to the story itself and uh, we trust this news reporter and she always checks everything with us. So have someone trusted. Uh, rather than just send it to just anyone because, you know, you never know what they're going to write. So it's good to have some trusted people in the industry. Okay, so cross-posting. As I shared before about cross-posting, how powerful it is, I want to show you this one. Uh, the influencers can share it as if it's their own, so they like that because it looks like they've posted it from their page. So this one, George Taki, is that how you say his name? He's got, sorry? Takai. Takai, okay. So he's got millions of followers. And at the time that Ben shared it with him uh, to cross post, we'd had about 100,000 views on it at that time. We'd first posted it. And he, uh, George, posted it as his own, a cross post. And it jumped up to 700,000 within a couple of hours of view. So it uh, yeah, certainly helps. And then when you go back onto our site, so where I've Ben shared it with me, so I cross-posted it, uh, it looks like the views are on my page, if that makes sense, because it says the amount of views uh, that are 700,000 views on my page and on Ben's page as well. Um, and then you know, all of the comments and everything and the sharing is all very helpful. Uh, this is the social one, so I'll let you see that.
So there you go. It's, um, it's short, but it communicates uh, the story within a minute. Uh, so that's another viral social video. That one was created by Valentina V, by the way, who is amazing, and she's, uh, she's from the US. Uh, she'll be speaking at Adobe Max as well. And uh, yeah, she actually did uh, a series on the Adobe Live uh, about how to create social videos. So I think you can probably go back and watch it. It was streamed from America, but uh, it was really good, like a full day of just the editing, how you put it together using um, you know, Premiere and After Effects and how you just make a social video work. So that's well worth checking out. Um, so, you know, if you search now, like if I actually Google my name or Google the Heart Project or Google Story Art or whatever, uh, all of these news reports come up. So, you know how you can search in Google for news specifically? Um, so, yeah, you can search and all of these come up and they, these are what is, helps my ranking as well and people finding me. It's, it's funny because I can't read half of them because they're in other languages as well. But, um, you know, if you can get your work out there, then it's, it's going to assist you in your own business and in your own uh, exposure as well. Uh, so, oh, here's a question. Should you get paid by the news sites for your story? Who thinks you should get paid for your story? Okay. Who thinks you shouldn't get paid? Who's not sure? <laughs> All right. It depends on the story. These stories are all about what we're doing. Uh, having them out there is absolutely beneficial to everyone involved. Uh, they're beneficial to our businesses as well. It's marketing. It's all. It's telling our story. So it's not a hidden. Uh, you know, it's not hidden in amongst anything else. If you've got your image, you're being asked by a news site to to sh share your image, and uh, you're not really being credited, or it's not about you. Basically, if it's not about you, it's about someone else, and you just happen to have taken the photo. You should get paid because you're not benefiting from that. You're providing them an image, right? Um, but when it's something like this, I don't think you need to get paid. I certainly don't feel I need to get paid for something like this. But there are sites that will. Uh, so there's certain new sites that will provide um, income from news stories. So places like Caters News, they actually write an initial story and then they sell the story to other news sites. So they, if they share one of our stories, then they will feed a certain amount back to the Heart Project. And so we can then continue to do work with the Heart Project. So uh, it, it depends. But I think the, the big difference is, are you benefiting from it? Or is someone else benefiting from it? Make that sort of help you make a decision on whether or not you should get paid. Uh, and is this, so is this story about your art, photography, or? the client or subject. I talked about why you shouldn't watermark. How do you protect your intellectual property? So we haven't had, I haven't had any one that I found steal these images yet. There's possibly someone that I haven't tracked, but I keep an eye on it. You know, you can do your Google searches and you can check. Everywhere that's written a story has credited it correctly. So, I think as long as you make sure you lay the ground rules and you make sure that it's done well with your media center, you're pretty safe. Never completely safe, but you're pretty safe. And if you do find someone that steals it and without crediting, then you can always order a takedown. We did have a couple of people like put up YouTube videos kind of retelling some of the stories. They've got maybe three followers and you know you do a search and it comes up. We just order a takedown on YouTube and it gets taken down. So you can kind of keep an eye on it. Uh, good publicity or bad publicity? OK, so when Daily Mail did the story on the ancestors, the first one I showed you, their title was, What is wrong with this photo? Now, I knew they were going to write that title. I said, oh, I don't really like that title. It's going to make people pick at the image. <laughs> you know, literally find what's wrong with it. 
And there was a lot wrong with it because I'd rushed my kids into the studio after school one night and they were wanting dinner and Jaslyn didn't want to pull the petticoat up because she liked it down and my son didn't want to wear the shorts like they were in the olden days. He wanted to wear pants and um, all these things that go on. And of course, I hadn't meant for it to go viral, so I just we just did it for fun. So I knew that title would be a risk. And of course, you know, if you look at the Daily Mail comments uh, on that, they're literally trying to pick out what's wrong with it. Oh, that's a Barbie doll. It actually wasn't. It was a porcelain doll that was quite old, but they think it's a Barbie doll. That, you know, the petticoat's too long. Oh, the names, because they said the names, Jaslyn and Asha, they're not names from the past. And, you know, there's all these comments about things, but it doesn't matter, because it's still getting my work out there. It wasn't terrible comments. So there can be sometimes, you know, you kind of got to take the good with the bad sometimes. And these, some of these sites, people are keyboard warriors and they will type things. Um, but, you know, you can sort of protect yourself from that by, as I said, making sure that you connect with the right people. If that had been a heart project, I would not have let the wrong title go out. So much more important because it was just my little fun thing. I wasn't fussed about it because the boss had said if it doesn't go out with that title, it doesn't go out at all. Okay, that's fine. But, you know, if it's something really important like the Heart Project, there's no way. I, you, can, you can have some control over how people respond by the way it's actually shared. So, uh, and so how do you handle the derogatory comments? <laughs> Just don't respond is probably the best way, you know, try and explain yourself and um, just doesn't work, so. And how do you keep track of the articles? It's important to keep a track of what's out there. So one of the easy ways to just see what's out there is actually to do a search. And they will come up under the news, Google News search uh, are the most authentic news sites. You can do a Google search and you'll probably find out a whole heap more. But the ones that are registered with the news uh, search are sort of those authentic news sites. So do a search, keep a record, know what's out there and, um, and share it on. So if you've got potential jobs coming up, people that you want to do work for, potential clients, you can share these with them. It's creating uh, that sense of credibility that you have been published and that you have shareable content. Yeah? All right, and uh, as I said, order a takedown if they don't play with the rules. So does anyone have any further questions on creating powerful images that grab worldwide attention. <laughs> I'm happy to answer anything. I'm an open book, so. I'm curious about you. How did you get started? Your story? My story. Oh, have we got another hour? <laughs> no, very quickly. I was, um, when I was about 16, my grandfather was into photography and uh, he helped me set up a dark room. I did black and white photography. I studied to be a teacher, primary school teacher, music teacher. I wanted to start my business in graphic design and photography. So I got out of uni. 2001, I started teaching and I also started my business, which was then graphic design took photos, but that was on film, and then moved into portraits and weddings. So ran a portrait and wedding photography business, gradually cut down on the teaching. 2008 went full-time photography. Had kids in 2011, I had Jaslyn, and then 2013 had Asha, and started thinking that weddings were just not fitting into family life. My husband was shooting the weddings with me, so we were gone leaving the kids with the parents. Just very, very difficult and started not to be as enjoyable. So I started looking for something different that I could do that fit into family life. And I kind of started playing around with different ideas and then I did a composite. Uh, it's a Pears Soap replica, so it's basically replicating a painting with uh, our kids and a dog. And I, I did that and I just absolutely loved it. I'd always played with Photoshop. I'd played with it from when I was first starting out, but I never really understood compositing. I ne like I look back at my images that I did and they were horrible. Uh, the shadows are wrong, the lighting's wrong, everything. But when I, when I did that first pear soap one, I thought 
if I could do that, that would be amazing. I took it to the shop that I actually created it for and they said, this is amazing, people are going to want this. And I thought, how am I going to do that? How am I going to charge for something that took me 10 hours to edit and about five hours to set up? I can't charge for one photo and get what, you know, the income that I get from portraits and weddings. But I decided to keep working at it, keep working through it. I had a mentality of being a wedding, Photographer, you have packages at that point, so I couldn't kind of get past that. But I kept building up my portfolio and I started winning awards and I started doing a whole lot more and just loving it. So I decided to drop the weddings and portraits totally, focus my energy on story art, set up the, the business and uh, just gradually build it up. And then I realised after a while, just with that pricing thing, which is kind of the turning point with actually making money on this, is that Doing these images, these composites for people, it's not about packages, it's art. And it's like a painting, it's like a portrait, it's your commission to do it. You charge for that time that it takes. So now when someone asks me how much it is, I will sit down with them, we'll go through what it is that they want, work out their story, make sure that they're part of that. And then we can come up with a price. And I work it out based on the time that it takes. So, and now I'm, I'm like, my business has just grown exponentially. I've registered a company, you know, I was always keeping below that GST threshold before and just, you know, doing the everyday stuff. And now I'm just letting it grow beyond what I ever thought it could. Uh, I'm teaching as well and I'm sharing, I'm using my teaching that I studied in to be able to teach people about Photoshop and to travel the world doing that. And it's pretty amazing. So, yeah, it was well worth the jump, but, and I love it. Yeah. So, um, so I have a story art education site full of videos and tutorials on everything. Uh, there's basics, there's more advanced, uh, and I bring out new videos just about every week, new content. I have a digital store there where I have brushes and actions. I was going to show you the Photoshop actions. We've run out of time, but uh, the, there is uh, videos on how they work. Basically, I've created actions where you press a button to create a shadow. You press a button to create rim light. You press a button to uh, do all the things that you know, you'd normally do manually. Uh, and I realised after a while I was doing all these things repetitively, I should actually make some actions. So I've got those there. But you get uh, a full month access free by using the code make it. Sorry, that should be one word, uh, make it. So it's make it one word, no space. Um, and that will, uh, you'll need to register, you will need to register a credit card, but if you don't want to stay on, just cancel it. It won't charge you for the next one. So just so you know, that's the way it works. But you put that code in and you'll get a full month, full access to everything. Uh, and so, yeah, I just love it. I love teaching people. I've got a Facebook group as well. So jump onto my Facebook page, Story Art, but also the Story Art Education Group. You can share your work. You can get constructive criticism. It's a wonderful group uh, and we make sure that, you know, there's nothing, there's no one putting anyone down. It's a really safe group. And uh, so you can jump in there and get all, all sort of free feedback from people. And um, yeah, so Story Art Education is the group. Story Art is my page. Uh, and yeah, I'd, I'd, if you have any questions about that afterwards, feel free to come up and ask me. But um, yeah, I just love teaching, so I love sharing it. And there's always something new. There is always something new with Photoshop. It's never ending. Always come up with new things. All right, any other last questions? Because I think our time is up. No other questions? So feel free to come up and see me. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night, and thank you.